Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. It's time for another daily dose of dismal Disney. This is Disney drama of the highest order. We're yeah, gonna... so apparently, um, I want to say it was it was CNBC. Is that what it was? Yeah. CNBC. CNBC reached out to like 25 or so people that were close to the situation with Bob Iger and Bob Chapek at Disney. And they, they got a bunch of stuff and they compiled, compiled it into one story, like a timeline, talking about what happened behind the scenes and all the drama that was going on. And what it boils down to basically was Iger didn't want to leave. He wanted to stay in charge. They kind of kneecapped Chapek. And in a lot of the, the, it was miscommunication or they had two different styles of communication that didn't mesh well. Yeah, so, I mean, this shouldn't surprise anyone. Uh, we've been covering this for years and it did seem like Iger did not want to leave. Yeah, we brought that up many times. And the fact that he, he wouldn't stay out of Disney's business. Now, here's the thing. Everybody's like, oh, he's back, he's back. It's like, he never left. He never really left. Mm -mm. So he did leave a little bit, but that goes right back within a few months. Yeah, so there's a lot of uh, machinations and Machiavellian scheming going on at the Mouse House. So we're going to talk about that. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, if you do, you'll get woohoo. Woohoo! And uh, Geeky is going to lead this video because I really don't know all the dirt. She's got all the Disney dirt. I got the Disney dirt. So we're going to go out to the original article, which is CNBC. And okay. it's a very long article, but there's a lot of stuff that happened. And honestly, I mean, we still have Chapek is in trouble with the lawsuits from investors because he allegedly shuffled stuff around to make it look more successful than it was and things like that. But, you know, if you when you hear all this, it's like the dude didn't even have a chance. And I don't even like Chapek that much. I mean, contrary to people think he's called, you know, paycheck, cheapskate, cheap peck for a reason. He's behind a lot of the cuts we got leading up to him taking a CEO. That's what his wife calls him. What? Which one? JPEG cheapskate. <laughs> paycheck. Paycheck. Um, That's mostly his name. paycheck. But what's sad paycheck. is you don't ever hear anything about him. Like when Iger left, oh, they were interviewing him. And he got to make all kinds of comments, right? Yeah. But you don't hear anything from JPEG. But they actually got a quote from JPEG, well, his spokesperson. Meanwhile, they reached out from comment for a lot of these people, and you're going to see they would not give a comment. Interesting. Uh huh. Interesting. So. Here we go. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about what happened. So they're talking about how we had a changing of the board. They're talking about you know Bob Iger's office having a shower, which apparently Chapek got later, and that's a big point of contention later. Why, why, okay, so I, I'm going to stop right there. That's a point of contention. I, I've actually had two or three bosses at much, much, much smaller companies than Disney that had their own like bathroom, their own guest cores. One boss, one company. He basically had like a... Um, a mini apartment inside of his office because a lot of times, you know, the CEO, the company, whatever, they would stay late, work late, whatever. Yeah. Um, well, I heard it too. And I guess, but there was a big office with a shower. And a little office. And I guess they agreed that Iger would take the big office because he liked to take showers or something. <laughs> I don't know. He, he Why like, he like, he like, he like, he would get up in the morning and work out. And then sometimes he'd get another shower again before he would go to events in the evening. So he was, he liked the two shower days, he said. Anyway, that's how, they, that's how they start this whole article, okay? What? That's so that's stupid. how they start this entire thing. I like thing. two shower days, too. So they're talking about the posters in Iger's bathroom. I don't really care about what posters. Wait, he's taking multiple showers looking at Clint Eastwood. No, he has a poster, I guess, that's similar to this. It makes it Iger sanction. It's like a parody of this, this oh uh, my poster. Oh, Okay. You know, because, which screams arrogance. But that's another story entirely. Anyway, they're talking about what was going on. And apparently... Um, they, the, he had issues, I guess, with, uh, with um, Eisner before. He yes. said that, you know, he he was a meltdown between Eisner and his number two, Michael Orvitz, in the 90s, and he kind of got stuck in that. And, you know, he I guess when it came to Chapek, they had a good relationship for years. They kind of worked together. Um, he was one of the people he was considering for succession, uh, but he wasn't the only one. And different things happened, and then Chapek ended up taking over. But what we're going to look at was mostly what happened after he took over. So here, the account is based on conversations with more than 25 people who worked closely with Iger and Chapek between 2020 and 2022. They declined to be named, and the events of the conversation were private. Many of the details have never been reported. So I wonder if those who wouldn't 
comment declined to comment for the story uh were a couple of them were these people and they said they declined to comment to cover their asses well everybody everybody gossips about their boss right i mean that's well this like- gets interesting because they corroborated among other people oh okay so here's the comment that that uh chapex says uh, the statement that his representative put out there guy hasn't been able to say a damn thing since even though i got yeah. to talk constantly Bob is proud of the work he did in the course of his 30-year career at Disney, particularly during the nearly three-year run as CEO, steering the company through the unprecedented changes of the pandemic and setting the course for business transformation as he and his team took the disruptive yet necessary steps for the business revitalization and long-term growth. Which is true because some of the choices he made, like the Disney, Iger walked back, like the DMED, Iger walked back. However... A lot of things Chapek was under fire for about making cuts and stuff. Iger turned around and did the same thing because Chapek was right that he, they should yeah. make the cuts. And so, you know, he, I feel bad because when you hear what happened, dude kind of got screwed the whole way around. So Iger declined to comment. I'm sure he did. So they're talking about who Iger was considering for succession, which we talked about before. Right, right. And then, um, you know, he thought the, he thought that Chapek was the right person for his continuous legacy. He, he appreciated the way that Chapek got things done when it came to the financials, especially around the China parks here, Shanghai. He said that after months of delays, you know, he was impressed by um, how he got the cost of our runs and construction headaches under control. Mm-hmm. So he, you know, that was his top choice apparently at that point. Right. And um, it goes on. It goes on for a lot of stuff, not talking about anything in particular. So um, Iger had picked, I guess, Chapek, and he had pegged Chapek as someone who would accept what? his somewhat. Wait, wait. Yeah. Is that why he's taking two showers a day? He's pegging Chapek? <laughs> no. Okay. He had pegged Chapek as someone who would accept his somewhat unusual succession plan. In which Chapek would serve as both CEO and CEO in training, while Iger remained his boss and ran creative endeavors for 22 months as executive chairman. So basically, he would pick Chapek because he figured Chapek would go along with him, basically be, being a puppet, so he can run the show still. So Iger wasn't going to step down. I think he, I, I'm sorry. They say that, that it was planned for six weeks. I still say bullshit on that yep. because when this thing happened, it was an emergency announcement. Both men, their body language screamed. We weren't we weren't prepared for this. If it was planning for six weeks, Jay would Pig you wasn't stop? Prepared to be pegged, and he screamed. He, <laughs> Sorry, they were, very, they were very very. If you read the body language, um, one thing I'm incredibly good at, and you can ask Neon, is I can read people very well. And yeah. the body language, yeah, he gets so mad because like I, I was like the only person that could figure out what he was thinking, and it used to drive him crazy. Um, the body language was it wasn't such a people who had been planning for this and it was in the works. It was more like, oh shit, deer in the headlights. And like Chapek looked like, you know, someone like, yeah, someone was like a missile was coming at him. Or and he was I- being pegged. No. And Iger looked like someone had kicked his puppy. Stop. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to make puppy kicking jokes. Just, That's, they're I draw puppy the pegging jokes. Just no. Hell no. What kind of a monster Even do you though think there was I a am? joke about screwing the pooch in here somewhere. No. Anyway. So now I can't remember what I was talking about. That ah, anyway, okay. So they looked like they, they weren't prepared for it, and then um, but here it turns out that you know Iger went along with Chapek because he figured Chapek would be his puppet. Stop. So the the <laughs> puppet show. So this guy. Okay. So basically, he looked at Bobby said, "Now that guy looks like a stupid meathead that'll do anything I want." Kind of, because he figured he'd go along with him being like, you know, he would be the he would be the CEO in training for two years while Iger ran the show. And that was the plan I think the board went along with was, you know, he'll step down uh, and and then give it somebody else. But they figured he was going to be there the whole time and help Chapek succeed, which comes up later in this article. Okay, so my just my takeaway from this is Bob Iger did not want to relinquish control. The board was pushing him. To name a successor, he picked the dumbest guy he could pick that he thought he could control so he could point to him and be like, look, look, this is why you need me. Pretty much. Yeah. So, but but Chapek wasn't dumb and figured it out pretty quick. <laughs> so um, he needed a full buy-in from the board for his plan to work. Um, but that didn't prove difficult because he was the gold standard of legacy and, and media entertainment CEO. So basically, he did, the board went along with it. Yeah, they were he was like, making money. He was and even money. though, even though... Um, 
every member of the board who did not have much uh, entertainment media experience, and he's best friends with several of them, BFFs, you know, they went along with whatever he wanted. So um, they go on about, you know, talking about stuff like that. So then they said about Bo Big Bob and Little Bob, <laughs> do not. <laughs> I know it just writes itself. Who's pegging him? Hold it in. Okay. That's what Hold he said. In. in the ride of a lifetime. I know it hurts. Start. It's the ride of a lifetime. Just hold it in, little Bob. Hold it in. Because I can't quit you. Not right now. Stop. Okay. Anyway, so um, I know I don't want to read. I don't want to read. Mini me. Listen, I don't want to read. Don't call Listen, him mini me. I don't want to read the next part. Because if I know I read the next part, you're immediately going to. At first, the signals were tiny. <laughs> I can't even get a serious video done because of you. This is serious. This is Disney news. It's the most important <laughs> thing that we're talking about today. So you better get serious. So, um, okay. So when Iger ta told the staff at Burbank that, that, you know, what was going on and he was, you know, going to leave, but he didn't leave. He referred to himself as Big Bob and then Chapek as Little Bob to let the employees know who the boss still was. Wow. And Iger started, or Chapek started to be like, hmm. So then um, on March 10th, 2020, they were going to the annual meeting. Okay. They're heading from LA on a plane to the annual meeting in, in Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay. So while Iger and Chapek were going over what was going to happen, you know, what they're going to talk about and all that stuff, uh, Iger pretty much just announced to Chapek that he wasn't, that, that Iger was going to lead the meeting and Chapek wasn't, even though Chapek was the CEO. So he's like, wait, what? <laughs> and um, and I, I guess one of the reasons was, I mean, there kind of was a good reason for it because he was new and he didn't have all the information. Like he didn't know a lot about the inner workings of ABC, ESPN, and stuff, the movies and stuff like that. And at these annual meetings, it's usually grill the CEO. And so they had given Chapek a binder of information. And, and he, a coloring I guess, book. They gave him a coloring no. book and said, get out of here, little uh, Bob. No. <laughs> they gave him a binder of information. Now, here's where the two different styles come to play. <laughs> just, just stop it. I can't do my job because you won't stop. So um, <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize to everyone. Anyway, okay, go ahead. I can't work. I'm going to hurt you. Stop. Um, so he was trying to memorize the material. And I guess the way he operates, and some people, you know, there's different people who do different things different ways. And like Iger was very personal, wanted to be like, you know, talk it out kind of thing. Stop. <laughs> JPEG is more of a memorization kind of guy. So he right, wanted right. time to like look over the, he wanted time alone to look over the binder and memorize the information. Well, I guess Iger was mad because he wanted to spend the time, like, you know, doing Q&A and practicing. I can't even do this. I'm waiting for I you. I wasn't saying anything dirty. I know, but I can't. Your mind was, because you can't I'm unsee waiting, it now. I'm waiting for you to make comments. I'm actually being really careful how I'm wording things because I know if I say what I want to say, you're going to go off. So he wanted to go in the back with him to practice. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and go ahead. <laughs> This is why we don't have more subscribers. And um, Iger, you know, he was like asking him like, you know, about the information. He goes, well, I have it all memorized. Well, he still didn't get to present because Iger didn't feel. And at that point, um, they said Iger thought that he made a mistake. Iger said he thought he made a mistake in, in, in who he picked because, you know, this guy didn't have the same style as he did, which that happens. I mean, not everybody's going to be the same. Right. And that doesn't, that's not necessarily a bad thing. So then, um, Corella de Ville. yeah, Corella de Ville. during the, during this whole incident, because of the flight there and the flight back, I guess Newsom called about, you know, shutting down for COVID. That was around the time I was writing the letter or writing the post about, you know, if Disney doesn't shut down, they're a bunch of assholes, um, at the time, because that we didn't know what was going on with COVID and everybody else is closing down for safety. You don't want to keep a theme park open. So, that was going on. And while I guess they were flying back, Christy McCarthy said to JPEC, hey, we need to have our first CFO CEO meeting. Why don't we do it right now? And apparently when they were doing that, Bob JPEC or Bob Iger got, sorry, one of the Bob, Big Bob Big got Bob, pissed. Just call him Big Bob and Little Bob. It's easier. It said um, they were around the third agenda point when Iger snapped. This, it was disrespectful, disrespectful to conduct this meeting in front of him. He complained curtly, according to the person that was familiar with the exchange. Now, again, this is all like hearsay, but. 
It makes sense somewhat. And then he's, this is interesting. It was rare for Iger to show Chapek a side of him that wasn't Disney nice. And that's funny because you mentioned all the time about corporate nice. Yes. So you're talking to a guy who spent most of his career uh, in boardrooms, working, you know, in corporate. And no, you just don't know anything about anything. I don't know anything about anything. Hey, you were working at McDonald's. What are you talking about? Clown shoes. Um, you were Ronald. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no. So anyway, yeah, uh, there, there definitely is corporate nice. There's corporate nice, right? Cause people can absolutely hate each other, but they still have to get the job done and they'll take a meeting and it'll be tense. And then when the person leaves the room, you're like, I hate that guy. God, That's I hate what that happened. Guy. I mean, and yeah. then, so at this point, Iger started to be like, oh crap, I think I'm starting to think that, you know, so at that point, little Bob was starting to think the big Bob was, you know, having second thoughts about leaving. Okay. So then, um, you can't quit, you Mickey. Stop. So then, um, right after this is when they had to shut down Disney World. Yeah. And uh, I will side with Iger on this one. Chapek wanted to lay off a hundred thousand park employees. Wanted to furlough them. Iger said, "No, no. There's going to be government relief coming. Why don't we just hold on to everybody until that happens, so that they have something? They're not like." You know, without anything, even though know, a lot of them still end up in food pantries, and the executives took a pay cut and complained about it. But yeah. that's a whole other thing we talked about before. And you know who who did better by their employees? It was it was Comcast. It was it Universal. Was. I'm just saying. It was. Which we have saying. a video coming about Comcast and we Disney do. here shortly, and Hulu. So um, during this time, I remember vividly talking, and I think we did a video on it uh, to Neon about the fact that. It was like uh, Gavin Newsom talking to Bob Iger. And then um, other things were being like the, the whole Disney and the pandemic was being headed by Bob Iger. And mm-hmm. we were like, we were like, where's Chapek? And we had, this is after they had the, the meeting, the first investor meeting. And, and it was run by Iger. We're like, why is Chapek not being allowed to do his job? So I already, we already kind of figured Iger yeah, was. Yeah, something, uh, something was up. Well, I guess the New York Times, the Ben Smith had published a thing. And he said a few weeks of letting Mr. Chapek take charge. Iger had effectively returned to running the company. Iger didn't deny it. He said, a crisis of this magnitude and its impact on Disney would necessarily result in my actively helping Bob and the company contend with it, particularly since I ran the company for 15 years. Okay, so Chapek got bad, understandably, because he he called Iger, and he said he didn't need a savior, and he apparently said some bad words. (laughs) And then Iger was mad because nobody, nobody had ever spoken to him like that. No colleague had ever spoken to him like no, that. But his wife does all the time. No, but I'm just like, but dude, you kind of can't blame them. You kind of can't blame little Bob. He's probably like, am I an effing boss or not? What no. the hell? And, and no, and supposed to just, not, Iger was supposed up. to just be there to help. Now, in the case of this crisis, I can understand why they want somebody who knew what they were doing. I've been there for years because it's a big, you know, unprecedented. I hate to use that term because I use yeah. it too much. But it was unprecedented. And I can see them wanting, and he should have been there helping him, but he was making it look like he was taking over again, which he was not. So Chapek went to mom and dad, which was the board, and then complained and um, about that what he was doing. And then I guess it took, um, you know, Susan Arnold, who was the chairperson, not the chairperson at the time, but she was later, the head of the board, chairman of the board, went and talked to Iger privately and said, hey, you're supposed to be setting him up for success rather than undermining him. Okay? Yeah, that's, I mean, because it sounds to me, I mean, look, just objectively it, it sounds to me like Iger was like this is my company yeah this is yeah my basically Disney you company. get the, that, that comes across more and more as we go yeah okay so Arnold of course declined to comment for the story they all declined to comment you'll find out it's really funny so then um Iger began privately grumbling that Chapek wasn't involving him in company decisions he told colleagues that he felt like he was on the bus right, with that the other passengers wanted him to drive but he couldn't reach the steering wheel so then Iger, or Chapek was mad. He thought Iger should be working with him more because of the pandemic. In that situation, I kind of agree. But then I also, I, I understand where Chapek's coming from. Because, you know, I think uh, Chapek would have been more inclined to work with Iger had Iger not made it clear that he thought he was still in charge. Yeah. If he was there to actually be his, assi- to be his help. Because I think Chapek thought I- Iger was supposed to be his advisor. And he is turning out like he's like kind of undermining him. And he, yeah. that was making him mad. Kind of. Um, kind of undermining him. Yeah, he was, he was really undermining him. So then they never did a face-to-face mediation. The board never demanded it. Um, you know, Iger was going around complaining about, you know, Chapek to Hollywood executives and agents, which probably didn't help later, and so on and so forth. And then plus it became obvious really quick that Iger had all his people in place, and they were, were on Iger's side, not Chapek's side. And then we get to the place where Chapek wanted to do something about the streaming, 
and he started with the the changing the the structure the restructure of the company yeah yeah and most of these people aren't there anymore the article's talking about like all yeah. these people that are gone they're not even with the company anymore yeah so chapek he i guess before, while he wanted to restructure it though he was actually going to bob Iger's house and trying to take meetings with Iger, and they were going on walks and i guess that he was getting mad because he would tell like Iger, like his ideas yeah he said he had meetings with Iger to discuss restructuring so he was trying to get the you know on the same page and he said that Iger didn't try to stop Chapek's plan, but he also didn't give his full endorsement. And his opaque communication style frequently confused Chapek. Chapek couldn't tell whether Iger's questions were passive aggressive, way to single disapproval, or genuine attempt to get more information. So again, miscommunication. Yeah, and people always have they always have different communication styles. I get I was watching um, I think it was Defunct Land. They were talking about how Epcot was supposed to be a city, right? And they're talking right. about Walt Disney. And they said, um, uh, very few people understood Walt and you were never allowed to tell Walt, no, that's a dumb idea. Oh like yeah. He, I saw that. Even if it was the stupidest idea. So he, his, his most trusted advisors would tell him it was a bad idea, but after they agreed that the overall idea was good, but the details weren't good. And then eventually Walt would come around to the realization that it wasn't going to work, but you could never directly tell Walt he was being stupid, except for Roy. Roy could be like, Walt, you're being stupid. But his inner circle was basically yes, men. But they would get through to him. They'd be like, yeah, he would listen because they didn't immediately dismiss him. So you well, had to learn how to you know, get through to this. I guy. think because we had this um, this power struggle from the beginning, um, Chapek didn't know what if Iger was trying to help him or hurt him. And you know, there's good grounds for saying this or wondering mm -hmm. this because Iger is behind the scenes is apparently going and trying to cause him trouble. So it's a big miscommunication and it's a big, um, and it's all stem, I think, stemming from power struggle. So um, they go on, they said that they saw, many executives saw the reorganization as a way for Chapek to shift power balance from Iger's base, then the TV and movie executives too. And that's probably true because, and this is, and this I can tell you, which is why he gets so mad about being called a bean counter. Chapek had long felt that Disney's culture under both Iger and Eisner treated non creative executives like him as second class citizens, according to people familiar with his thinking. Okay? As they should. I'm well, sorry, this is the Walt Disney Company. And even Roy Disney understood creativity. Uh, JPEG, to my, in my personal opinion, didn't understand creatives well, at all. I think the problem too wasn't, he, he, like, there's two people in charge because I guess they said like Kathy Kennedy wanted a voice, wanted opinions on everything. <laughs> and they said right here, they were talking about different people from different, the different uh, groups. I don't know where it was, but they all wanted, they all wanted to say. So he did the Disney media entertainment division, DMED, and he did it to try to, um, to reorganize, and it also kept the uh, smaller group of people. So it gave him and Daniel all the power you're, over everything. You're one letter away from what Disney would eventually reorganize as dead. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, pretty dead. much. And there's going to be some interesting things along the way here. I know this is long, but there's a lot of stuff here, and it's very interesting. So um, the, the people don't like Daniel because they thought he lacked industry experience. Basically, it sounded like a lot of people were mad at um, Chapek and Daniel because they didn't think they should be in charge and they're Iger people. And um, they, the, I guess some people said they got, they got belittled a lot. Daniel and Chapek felt belittled a lot. And people said that they did kind of get belittled a lot. I look, I've been in situations like that where you get these clicks at the company and, and you know, what happens a lot of times too, is you have, you got to watch for in corporate culture when your boss gets gone Keep your resume updated because a lot of times your boss will have their people that they think are loyal to them. They'll put their team together. And when your boss is out the door, it's all bets are off. Like mm -hmm. they'll keep you long enough until the new boss gets their own team together. That's well, he gets his own team more because he's even the whole time this is going on. Iger's still there. So we can't get rid of Iger's people because Iger's still over on the board. Okay. Yeah. And he still has a big office. So, um, I guess there was a lot of conflicts between Daniels and like you've heard, like there's Daniels and um, Bergman and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, Bergman didn't comment either. So they said directors, producers and actors pan the reorganization and all that stuff. They're all mad about it. And this is going to come into the Scarlett Johansson thing eventually. They talk about ESPN. ESPN is a little different because they actually are more willing to work with him. They said that many Disney creative executives viewed the reorganization as an example of poor decision making, probably because they don't get to make their decisions. Yep. Chapek loyalists thought it's a necessary change to modernize, Di modernize Disney, which they felt was being sabotaged by petulant TV and movie executives with Iger's tactic ba backing. That's also true. 
uh, TV and movie people at Hollywood. I think Hollywood, we're, we're seeing the decline of Disney and Hollywood, I think, is directly involved. Oh, yeah. Um, which, you know, they loved it then. Iger's back, and, and now he's not playing ball, so now they hate Iger because he's not going off the strikes. So this brings us up to late 2020, 2021. And oh, my God. Disney, I told you this is long. The saga. Prepare yourself, guys. Get your popcorn now because this goes on for a while. And it gets even more interesting because we come to the Florida situation here in a bit. So in between 2020 and 2021, Disney executives throughout the company started to feel increasingly awkward about the iger Chapek relationship. Right. McCarthy warned Chapek that Iger's criticism was reaching an increasingly wide audience. But McCarthy declined to comment on the story. Of okay. course she, yeah, they probably paid her to go away. Like, Mo- get out of here. Most tried to ignore the rift and do what they were told. But then we come to this person. This is interesting, too. Xenia M- Muka, Mucha, M- Mucha, who yeah. had, was the head of Disney's communications since before um, Iger was CEO. She tried to take a more active approach, reminding Chapek that his predecessor's legacy and stature and urged him to portray a united front with Iger. But he didn't trust her because she was close to Iger. And, um, and some of Disney referred to her as sec- his second in command. So she was his uh, Iger's advocate, advocate, communication advocate, and not Chapek. So Chapek wanted to get some some like you know press out there about him to try to you know make do make it look better for him, make it look better for the company, etc. Right. Basically, know your place. But wait, she wouldn't do it because she argued the country was being ravaged by coronavirus, and it wasn't the t- right time for puff pieces in Hollywood trade magazines. Yeah, except they kept running stuff about Iger all the damn time. They did. It felt like Iger had his own like side PR person. Well, it's probably this it's person. Probably her. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So he couldn't fire her because she's best friends with Iger and it's the second command. So he, he started soliciting external advice without her knowledge to try to. Uh oh. And, and of course, she declined to comment. All right. So let me get to this Claude Johansson controversy. And basically what happened here was, you know, it was the contract was one way. Now, apparently since Iger and Chapek are supposed to be co-running, basically Chapek thought Iger would be handling it because Iger usually handled the Hollywood stuff because he was up their ass so, you know, hard. It was ridiculous. Yes, that was intentionally jokes. You can make a comment now. He was pegging Hollywood. He was pegging Hollywood. And, you know, he was in like flim with these people until now. Now they hate him because he wears designer clothes. But, um, yeah, isn't that weird? Isn't that weird how that worked? They all loved Bob Iger. And they're like, if only Bob Iger was in charge, we wouldn't have gotten screwed like we did with Chapek. If only Bob was here. And I was like, why are you screwing us, Bob? So here's some right? money for cab fare, bitch. Get out of here. <laughs> That's pretty much. So, um, they're talking about the whole situation. And I guess, um, you know, Chapek was thinking that Iger was going to take care of it. Um, because he thought it was a creative issue, which Iger was in charge of, because they said that Iger would be staying on the board handling the creative stuff. Right, okay? right. So Iger had a long-term relationship with, I guess, the agent or whoever the uh, the law firm, whoever was, you know, Brian Lord, her agent, Brian Lord. Right. So he figured that he could handle it because they had a good relationship, and, and Lord Bad. declined to comment. Okay. Bad. <laughs> and then Iger was basically like, well, if he wants to be CEO, he can do it himself. He oh. should be CEO. Oh, okay. I see how that is. Like, yeah. Well, if you think you can do better. So, you know, again, you go. Iger could have saved the company a lot of hassle and he didn't because he's like, if you want to be CEO, you can be CEO. So I got to wonder, is all this bad news and gossip coming out right now because of the Hollywood strikes? Because everybody's could be. looking at Iger and they're like, yeah, you know, you could fix it, Bob. Right, because all this could have come out sooner not. and it didn't. And they said Chapek and Iger were barely speaking to each other, which we knew that was going on. Yeah. Okay. Um, they had a meeting after Johansson sued. They had about 20 executives, including Iger and Chapek. Iger didn't speak because he felt the meeting was amateur hour and run by children. <laughs> Um, is that good people familiar with what he was thinking? I see what's going on. No, this is, I think he's a little petty bitch. I think he's a petty bitch, but I think they're all turning on him because I think there are people in the company blaming him for the, uh, the escalation and the, uh, standoff with the actors. And the, I think, I think I see what's going on here. They're basically like, well, yeah, Bob Iger is not quite the hero you thought well, he was. Iger let Chapek take the fall for a lot of stuff you're going to yeah. find out. But beyond that, we said when Iger came back, this was not a win. Iger was nope. behind a lot of the issues that put Disney where it was. Yep. A lot of things people are mad about now, Iger was behind. And, you know, apparently this was, this could have been resolved without a lawsuit. But, you know, because the miscommunication again, and I think deliberate, you know, 
at behavior on on Iger's side. Can we get Eisner back? Is it too late? Yeah, I know, he's, right? He's really old now, but yeah. Iger and Chapik both signed off on this aggressive uh, aggressive public statement that accused Johansson of callous disregard for the horrific and prolonged global effects of COVID nineteen. So both I, Iger agreed to it too. Okay. Mm. And then the, the, that Mucha agreed that Disney needed to have a forceful response because a lawsuit named Iger and Chapek mm-hmm. as financial beneficiaries uh, from Disney+. Plus. So Iger and Chapek, which comes into play later, too, which they don't mention, the lawsuit that's going on now, which they were their list is basically financially benefiting by tricking the investors is the lawsuits, okay? <laughs> so, no, and so, you know, both Iger and Chapek disagreed with the tone of the statement. They both thought they shouldn't put that out because that would be really crappy. And, but neither one of them stepped forward to stop it. And of course, when it came out, um, Iger told Chapek he should issue a formal apology Get, because, you know, it got out. But, you know, Iger kind of let it happen, too. And then so he could take the blame for it. And then Hollywood and the talent agents blame Chapek. And he thinks Chapek thought Mucha pushed a narrative to the press. And to defend himself, he solicited a number of communications team to help him call reporters not informing of Mucha. Too and that whole thing cooks, went down. Too many cooks. Right. Too many cooks. And then apparently Iger had a party, a goodbye party for himself, and he invited a bunch of people like a Steven Spielberg. Party for himself. And and he wasn't and he invited he invited Chapek if he didn't want to. But Chapek had a previous engagement, so he was like, Yay, Chapek's not coming. But Chapek felt like, oh my gosh, I really should be there because you know this is really important. So he canceled his plans and then went to the event. And they said the tension between the two was palatable. And Chapek sat as far away from Iger as possible. Um, it was humiliating, <laughs> but Chapek told friends he was relieved the tension was out in the open. This is this is like inviting like your ex to your your Kinda. second wedding or something. Like, yeah, she sat there with her arms crossed and stared daggers at me. But you know, I felt like I should invite her for the kids. Right. That's good. Yeah. I know what's going on? Yeah. So then after Iger was actually gone, gone. <laughs> But he wasn't really gone, gone. You'll find out. But when he was gone, gone, Chapek's like, finally, I can do what I want to do now. Thank the Lord. So he went and and rearranged stuff. He went to executive housekeeping. He he got the private bathroom office. <laughs> That's right here. See, with Iger gone, Chapek could finally run Disney his way. And he moved into Iger's larger office with the private bathroom that he never used. And Iger, predi- and Iger predicted he wouldn't use it. It was wasted on that swine. Oh, my God. So I'm thinking like Kevin McAllister. <laughs> all I'm thinking of this is like this is like like yeah it's like it's like um, people are getting divorced and all the the fallout like all the things that she got mad at me for I can do it now irreconcil- irre- irreconcilable differences that's what this reminds me oh of my God. anyway that's what so, feels like it feels like a freaking messy divorce so Chapek finally got to do stuff he wanted to do so he combined government relations with media communications this is where he, he hired Jeff Morrell. Um, yeah, he was only there for a couple. Well. Yeah. Okay. But wait, we're, we're going to talk about the Florida debacle here in a minute. Oh my God. And that decision forced out Mucha as well as their general counsel, you know, Braverman. And, yeah. and he figured he was a diehard loyal loyalist, a bunch of diehard Iger loyalists. This is like loyalist. Game of Thrones. They it just, is. It is like, like Game of Thrones look, look, or okay. Highlander. So if they want new Disney plus content but they don't want to spend a lot of money in special effects just do a documentary like a 10-part documentary series and what happened of what the hell happened at disney but they won't but if somebody else wants to do a streaming oh, series go ahead i would recommend it yeah it'd be anyway like, yeah, yeah. so um then other people left because you know he was re- he was restructuring he fired rice um and all that stuff and he and you know he just did a lot of restructuring after all people just bailed you know jumped ship and he, Chapek, you know, saddled up to McCarthy and was like, you know, trying to be her BFF. And he offered her, he jokingly offered her a lifetime contract, you jo- know. Jokingly? Yeah. So so now his inner circle was only a handful of senior executives, and he didn't trust most of the existing leadership because they all had ties to Iger. Okay. So, um, and he didn't think Susan Arnold was on his side. Because she represented, you know, she also was like up Iger's ass too, apparently. Well, he was there for 15 years. I mean, this is the, this is what's hard. This is what's hard when you've got the same CEO in charge of a company for a year. Like, th- you can't, especially if you know that that CEO doesn't trust his replacement or there's questions, whatever. You know, if that person doesn't, if they're looking at Bob Iger, who they've known for years, and Bob's like, you can't trust Bob Chapek. Then nobody's right. going to trust well, Bob Well, that's Chapek. the problem, too. You know? Iger went into it, you know, with him thinking he was still going to run it. 
Yeah. And that he was picking a puppet. And he knew some of the other people that were that were that were probably in better choices to run the company, which just explains why they picked JPEG, because we're all like, why would they pick JPEG? Because he thought he could control JPEG. So and then he found out he head? couldn't. Oh, that meathead. I get it. Oh, I get then it. he okay. wouldn't he couldn't control him. Yeah. And and the thing is, it's what's sad is that they're all saying it's for the good of the company. It wasn't. It was for the good of their own egos because Iger is seemingly from the get-go set out to undermine JPEG. And of course his cronies were gonna side with him because he's out there telling him, I don't think JPEG's a good I, you know, good deal. I don't think he's a good person for the job, all this other stuff. And he was supposed to be, you know, like teaching him how to run it. And there'd be a couple of years where everybody would, you know, he'd be like there to help him shift. And then they didn't, they didn't stay on the same team because they were butting heads and Iger was constantly trying to take over. And Chapek was always, you know, trying to second guess Iger, which is, I mean, completely understandable way Iger was behaving. So I just want to tell everybody as somebody who, who has studied the life history of Walt Disney, who admires Walt Disney very, very much. Here's what Uncle Walt would do. He'd fucking fire all of them and change the fucking locks. That's what he would do, yes. He wouldn't put up with this shit at all. That's why everybody's like, oh, Disney was so nepotistic. He hired his relatives and he hired, yeah, because he could trust them mostly. Well, he could control them too. Yeah, pretty much. Because, you know, you you can't least- like... Get away from him. Yeah, at least he was in charge and you didn't have to worry about him. Well, this, worry a lot about of problem, in the back. A lot of the problems seemed to be the fact that there was a power struggle the entire time. Yeah. And if, and if uh, Iger had actually done what he was supposed to do and taught Chapek what to do and taught, showed other people that he was, you know, backing Chapek and, you know, he's going to make mistakes because he's new, but we're going to, we're going to help him. I think the outcome would have been completely different. This, so this, this is not. The Disney, this is a Disney company. This is a current in, Disney difference. In name only. Right. And Iger, again, I want to remind you, was the one who made a lot of decisions that Disney is paying for now. Yeah. Um, now we're getting into Florida. The don't say gay bill. Okay. Oh, so we're okay. going to find out some things that are very interesting. And poor Che Peck got blamed for a lot of it. And it seems like it wasn't his fault. So it turns out that we have the whole don't say gay bill. Okay. And. It says Disney's one of the largest taxpayers and employers in Florida. Chapek and Morrell were soon fielded media inquiries about the stance on the matter. And employees, particularly animators of Pixar and Disney Animation, shocker there. In Glendale and Burbank. Right. Wanted yes. to know how the company planned to yes. react to it. The law in Florida, which didn't impact them at all. No. But Iger, I, I guess, had said, well, if the bill passed and he made this big, you know, flowery, you know, it's going to impact the blah, 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 blah. Yes. And he always was sticking his foot in it when it came to politics. But Che Peck and Morrell had already done this. They had come to this, this new idea that for PR, they were going to stay away from politics, which is what you probably should fucking do in a situation like this. There's a reason they tell you, do not talk politics. Do not talk religion. There is a reason, okay? Yeah, and honestly, you can trace back like 90% of Disney's decline in recent years to bonehead political messaging. Yeah, well, wait. I'm going to give you... Okay. okay. So... Chapek and Morrell thought they'd have months to get their strategy and plan to explain to people what they were doing and why they were not doing it. Because Iger went out and made comments, and he, I'm sure he deliberately did it. Um, everybody was like, turn on Chapek. So they put out a memo to staff, the one we probably think we read. And Arnold, who's an open lesbian, signed off in the statement but told Chapek that Disney should also sign a public letter about the Humane Rights Campaign. So because she's a lesbian who doesn't live in Florida, they, this whole thing started to make sense, Right. So, oh my um, God, there are too many cooks in the kitchen. Right. Walt would have wait. fired all of them. But wait, so wait, okay. hold on. So Chapek intended to sign the HRC letter, but didn't want to undercut the message of the initial statement. So Morrell and Chapek agreed that doing so would conflict with the company's new strategy of staying away from external conflicts. And I guess one of the reasons he was doing it was because of China. He was trying to stay away from conflicts of well, politics. Uh, they explained that later. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he, he talked about the statement he put out and everything else. The blowback was swift. Employees chastised Chapek with hashtags such as Disney do better and Disney say gay and all this other shit. And most of them didn't even live in Florida. Okay. I just want to go back up to that picture just because we covered this in Florida. Now in California. Oh, the there, one person that showed up? One person walked out in Florida. Uh, there were a bunch of people in California, of course. Right. That was the one it, person. Because it totally affects them, but they did not want to move But they don't clarify that in the statement. It was they one not. person. They do not. Okay. So, um, so then they, they, they Chay Pick and Ron were like, we're trying to keep Disney. We don't want Disney in a culture war with DeSantis. And Chapek had a relation, a solid relationship with the Santas, and was you know we don't want to go, we don't want to go in there, we don't want to go into politics because well it's not their place. But beyond that, it's just going to cause a lot more headaches. 
And they were thinking about China, according to people familiar with the matter. Disney's Avenger Endgame um, did well in China, and they they have the parks there, and they'd be far easier to avoid conflict with the Chinese government if Disney embraced a policy of not taking stances on social and political issues at all. So they were pandering to China, which I want to point out, Iger did all the damn time. Iger was he the was one down who there all the time. CCP people, on, you know, they they were hiring CCP people. He started that whole thing. So yeah, I mean, again, this is another thing that they're blaming JPEG for. Oh that wait, was, it gets better. Was, uh, okay, but wait, but there's, wait more. there's more. There's more. Okay. So Arnold, who turns out to be she's LGBTQ herself, told JPEG neither did I because it wasn't not, well. We would think it wouldn't matter, but it does matter in this regard because she had a clear bias. Told JPEG she'd been bombarded by furious comments from the LGBTQ community and since disney's brand was at risk yeah it was a risk but because this is because of arnold's choice that the disney's in, in the fucking situation it's in so she told chapek he'd have to walk back the statement for the good of the company so chapek's pissed and he laid into his communications team telling him he regretted putting out the statement but the board refused to back him so he puts out the statement that the board agreed to then the board turns around board being arnold Who's the chairman says we're not going to back you now? Is and, is Bob Chapek feeding them this information? Because this sounds like it's all coming from Chapek's point. I'm just saying. No, they said they talked to 25 people, but that were for both Iger and okay, Chapek. Okay, well, that, look, there are a lot. But this people, makes sense. There are a lot of people who have an axe to grind because they got gone, they got shuffled. They but got this displaced. makes sense yeah. though, because morale yeah. was. We, we knew that they were saying that we didn't want to get the politics, and that's why he said when they release a statement initially was because their stance is going to be to stay out of that because so, Iger kept putting them in it. Yeah. And that sounds wh- like, All right. you know, this is why it feel, it felt like Disney couldn't make up its damn mind about things. Cause it was just like, so because Disney, Chapek didn't have any power yet. Cause he hadn't been there very long and he, and, and you know, he didn't have extension to his contract yet. Right. He said he figured, like, you know, not doing what Arnold said, even though he disagreed, would get him, you know, in trouble. So, you know, he went out, walked back his statement, and, you know, we're, con- we're continuing to be supportive, you know, community going forward. And then he turned around and, and, he, and he, um, he got morale to help him sign, donate money to that HRC thing that she made him sign, right? Yeah. And then, um, then she still wasn't enough for Arnold. So she told Chapek he needed to formally apologize to Disney employees. What she did, you need to be a stronger ally. So this is why Chapek did all the the apology tour. Yeah, but the problem the problem with the look, regardless of how you feel about things, or whatever. The problem as a CEO, when you can't you, pick one stance and stay that way. Yeah, when you apologize and you waffle, you undermine your own leadership. You undermine your own authority. Well, they're exaggerating um, it like a lot too. Oh, on March twenty, hundreds of employees did walk out. No. They, they, they Some were hundreds of people. Did yeah, there was like, you know, like, maybe the, by hundreds, they might like two. Yeah. You know, there wasn't a lot. People didn't come. Now, now, what's interesting though is that we've actually heard from LGBTQ Disney employees. We've had people, you know, in the comments, we had people send us emails, whatever private emails. And they're like, you know, even if I don't agree with DeSantis, like Disney's handling of this is freaking messy. And they're like, it actually puts the crosshairs on us well because arnold insisted that he do all this stuff and then he fires he ends up firing morale and all this other stuff you know and because of arnold insisting this right you can trace back disney's disney's you know like jump off a cliff you can really trace it back i mean it was bad when chapek and and Iger were the situation too but they were actually doing pretty okay when they got to the don't say gay thing, that's when it really started going downhill. And everybody's blaming Chapek for it, for walking it back. And here he was told he had to by Arnold. And she, so she, and she didn't get any blame at all. Yeah, this is the first I've heard about that. Now, this makes a lot more sense. I didn't even know. We're like, why is he changing his stance now? Yeah, it seemed very wishy-washy and very weird. But when you've got her saying, hey, you need to do this because, oh, oh, Bob, all of Disney's mad at you. I mean, me and my friends, we're all mad at you. And, well, this uh, is well. This is where they start going too far the other way because no, because no. he got rid of morale or moral or whatever morale. Moral's funny. Moral. Moral. Um, and and of... replaced him with Christina Shake Sake, who was a co-founder of American Foundation Shake. of Equal Rights, an organization so that led the okay. ch- to challenge and restore marriage equality in California. Okay, which I, I think marriage equality should be okay, but you probably people are pissed at me for saying that. But I don't think that that it should ram down everybody's throats either. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make a controversial statement. I'm gonna make a controversial statement here. Uh, as people know, I am an outspoken libertarian. I don't think it's the government's business what you do in your bedroom. 
Yeah. As long as you're not hurting anybody else, it's none of the government's damn business. I guess my thing is, I don't care what you do, but I don't think Disney has should be the company have. You know, take, I don't think companies like Disney should be the ones telling everybody else what no, they should. No, it's do. not Disney. I don't think it's Disney's place. So here's the thing. And again, you want to talk about you know free markets, and you want to talk about people making decisions. If a company like Disney puts out statements that they're clearly you know, playing politics, they want to get involved in politics, then they have to deal with the repercussions of that and realize that when you pander to our country at this point in time is basically split down the middle. And if you pander to one side, you're going to alienate the other. If you want to make all the monies, all the monies, you got to kind of play stay out of it. You got to kind of, which is what he tried to do. But it turns out that Arnold wouldn't let him because she had a dog in the fight because she was personally pissed. So here's my thing. Why couldn't Arnold? If true. I'm going to say if if true. true. Because this is coming from CNBC. Why couldn't Arnold donate her time, talents, and money to causes she felt passionately about and be like, Is that demanding that the Disney company has to do the same? See, this is the biggest problem that people have when they feel passionate, whether it's it's people that are uh, into you know social causes or people that are into religious causes or whatever. When they bring it into the workplace and they expect the company, which is supposed to be neutral, to get inv- unless they say otherwise. And there are companies out there that say, hey, we have a mission statement. And this is what we're about, right? And that's okay. That's what you've been about since uh, the beginning. Right. And that's what you've been about since the beginning. But when you come into a company, a pre-existing company, and the company is like, we are neutral. We just make entertainment to entertain everybody. And that is it. Uh, we've got people across the board. We got people that are super religious and they're super conservative. And we got people that are uh, super, uh, you know, liberal, uh, liberal and into activism and all that stuff, right? And we all got to figure out how to get along because uh, we're making content for everybody. But when you get activists come into these companies, and this is a very recent thing in the last, because like. 20 years ago, if you had somebody that was hyper-religious coming into a company and being like, everybody has to adhere to my religious beliefs and we got to change this and change that because it offends me personally as a a person of this particular faith, they're going to look at you and laugh. But anymore, it's like, well, this offends me because of my particular, and let's be honest, your, your social beliefs, a lot of them are akin to religious beliefs. This offends my religious group this offends it's like people be like well we'll make accommodations where we can but for the most part we got to serve everybody right and that's 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 where all these companies came off the rail and they didn't know well, they role. set up a, a policy trying to avoid that for this yes, reason and, and had they let chapek do. do what chapek was going to do disney would probably not be in the position it's going to be in if you're going to say that um desantis is doing this as retaliation that's what they're trying to sue and argue for now well you did it to your damn selves because chapek tried to keep you out of it and sounds like arnold put y'all in there so anyway um i guess okay. he said that because of it he didn't have the the clout to bounce back and they talk they, they tell a story that's actually hilarious like like Iyer because i guess Iyer got himself in trouble in 2019 because they had to have like a, a company picnic day and they have like a maldi day gathering where executives come and they have fun playing games and they're all the executives together and apparently at one point the, 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 the tondra newton remember the the d the dei person oh, fired yeah yeah, yeah. She was black riding a white horse, and Iger said, now that's a horse of a different color. Oh, my God. No, wait. He added that Newton was always working and chose to ride the white horse to focus on diversity when all the other horses were brown. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know. Can you highlight that? That is yeah. insane. Oh, no, I should find it again. Oh, my God. They're so prog- – that- holy shit. You know, you find this. This is a thing, too. This is one thing I've learned in the last couple of years since we started covering this stuff. Is the people that brag the most about being progressive tend to be the most like closed minded, oh, racist people? I've the out most, there. yes, the most terrible, horrible, shitty people I've ever seen have been some of these extreme far leftist people mm-hmm. that are like, you didn't, you didn't do enough. And even, you know, I, I stand for black people, but, but you didn't agree with me. So you're a, and they say all the slang terms I would never ever repeat ever. I'm just like, I'm sitting here like, what, who the hell, for somebody that's supposed to be so damn progressive, who the hell would look at a black woman on a white horse and that would be the first thing that came to mind? Like, what the actual fuck? Maybe she was like the, the horse because it was pretty maybe horse. Maybe it was just know? a pretty horse. You know? Maybe um, maybe it had strong legs. You know? I don't know. Who the hell knows? So Iger had to do an apology tour and he Holy found her and apologized. Shit. And he apologized to all the black executives who had been, in, who you know, were there and apologized to them and called, you know, the board and told them he did it. And they all forgave him because it was Iger, right? So they're basically saying there's, a, there's you know, Tell two cities here, you know, Iger can say one thing and everybody forgives them and Chapek does this and everybody hates him. Okay. 
even though it wasn't even Chapek's decision. So, um, yeah, because the difference is Chapek stuck his foot in his mouth trying to stay out of the situation, right? Iger, they just basically the, the mask fell off. And you well, saw Iger, got, Iger was making comments, which made Chapek have to make a statement to begin with because Iger could have stayed, kept his mouth shut. And he didn't. He had to go make digs to get his digs in there. And when he did, it put the company in a bad position again and put Chapek in a bad position again. So looking at this whole thing, I'm looking at this. The clusterfuck that is current year Disney is a result of all these people trying to stab each other in the back. And yeah, not like Chapek nothing. do his job. Yeah. And then then to to do it all in the name of diversity and inclusion and what that was all bullshit. They were basically using yes. using people, using the things that they're passionate about. To basically knife each other in the back to get ahead. Well, not just get ahead. Like she, it was a personal. She was she was personally offended, so she wanted Chapek to make it, you know, to to turn tail and but side with her. She CEO or she starts her own company. Like I said, well, she the, they all usually come from companies. I mean, she's gone now. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, if never the, got blamed for it at all. Apparently, if the company started, and we said, not look, we, we are an explicitly LGBTQ focused company. This is our mission statement. This is what we are. This is who we are. This is how we feel about things. And we are out there to, to, for for activism and poli politics from the beginning. And that. Is, that is a That's completely fair. acceptable. That is a completely acceptable thing. You might limit your audience, right? But that is what your company is about. Same with like Chick Fil A. People get pissed off about Chick Fil A because they're openly Christian. Well, they've been since day one. Hobby Lobby too. Hobby Lobby too, right? But they've never they've never hid that. You they've know, like never hid you know that. that's the difference. It didn't change. You know, was, they, they've stayed the same. They're, they're consistent. Right, and you don't have to eat Chick Fil A chicken if 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 you can taste the homophobia and you don't want to eat it. That's on you, right? Um, that's fine. But I'm just saying like Disney though, has always been a company that has been entertainment for everybody. Family. They keep saying family, family entertainment. entertainment. And then people are like, no, let's make the, let's remake the company into our own image guys. And they've been doing it with everything. Star Wars and Marvel and the cartoons right. and this is a certain type of people. Now they're paying for it. So uh, you know? we're trying to wrap this up, guys. I told you this is going to be a long one. It's, it's very long, but there's a lot of really interesting information here. Oh, it all makes so, sense now. It all makes sense. So I guess then, then after all this came down, you know, that's when they started working on that. That Chapek was going to bring out. Uh, he was the one who was going to bring out the advertising for Hulu, and you know Disney Plus, and he's the one that was going to put the Hulu and Disney Plus together in a bundle that they're now putting out under Iger. But it was Chapek who actually had come up with the idea, and they talked about it. They're talking about the next generation storytelling um, and stuff like that. He was trying to do new things to have like think outside the box and bring stuff to the company. He um, he wanted to rethink ESPN because they're having trouble and things like that okay right so then we had the whole then we come down to the whole the whole thing with the streaming services that's when the after pandemic the honeymoon was over and all the streaming services start taking a hit okay yes so um i want to start though i also want to mention too that uh during this time people kept going to Iger the whole time. Privately, Iger continued to talk with past and present disney executives about chapek and the future of the company with several urging him to return to disney Okay, so this is all going on in the background, too. So then they had their worst performing stock in the, in the Dow Jones average, down 40%. It was when they had the big you know, subscriber purge for all the different streamers had it, too. Yeah. And I guess the new person that he brought in, um, that, that sh Shocky Shake. or whatever, Shake. she, whatever, whatever her name is, she, um, she, started, she started siding up to, to Iger. And, you know, Chapek didn't like it because, you know, but he's like, you know, what can I do? So oh um, then, this, then this whole thing started, too, that Christy McCarthy, now I remember this, too, was happening, that normally Chapek and McCarthy were usually pretty unified. They're usually united. You see it, you see it in investor calls. Yes. They would div divvy it up ahead of time. Yeah. Who's going to cover what? I guess they would rehearse it for a, a month ahead, and they would do different stuff to make sure that everybody, each other knew what the other person was going to say and do so no one was caught off guard, and that they were on a unified front. Well, apparently McCarthy decided that she was going to just sneak stuff in there that she didn't tell him about. Um, and she went off script and she referenced numbers and forecasts the executives hadn't discussed. She told the board the quarter finals were on pace to be very bad. Um, and then she told the board that Disney's earnings that quarter would fall dramatically short of the uh, Wall Street consensus and all this other stuff, which she caught him off guard. And yeah, then to make him look bad. Yes, that's what it like, seems because like. Because of Bob's incompetence, we're going to be down this quarter. Bob. Yeah, basically. Um, and he's like, it's kind of her fault because she's the one who has the, the numbers and they all, all the, the, the divisions report to her. He's God. like, you know, and he, and he didn't have the information or whatever. This is like a 1980s, like Wall Street drama movie, like 
Except there's no funny punchline or anything. It's just like, it's just like, this is a disaster. This is going to be a movie. They're going to make a movie about this. So they're talking to you about like, um, he didn't believe it was as bad as McCarthy was saying. He said that, that Daniel was telling them they were doing really well. We're killing it. Yeah. Yes, Kareem. Yes, yeah. you well, are killing the company. There's a lot of killing it, but I don't think it was a story Chapek that did yes. it. Yes, yes you um, are. Oh McCarthy God. told colleagues she hoped her honesty with the board would jar Chapek into realizing his rosy outlook wasn't based in reality. I think it was just to undermine him. Yes, um, it was to undermine him. You don't do that her, to a CEO during a, an earnings call. Right. And yeah. then they said that, the, you know, then they said they went to a retreat and that that this it was McCarthy and a couple other women that that the one chick that one, I can never pronounce her name, Shocky or Shocky, whatever Shockey. name is, whatever Shockey. name is that, that chick, Shake, that, rattle and roll. the chick that replaced him. He started referring that to them. Chick. He started referring to them as mean girls. <laughs> oh no. He was oh. the, 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 her and this Quan Kondrani. The mean he was, girls. He was referring to them as the mean girls. Oh my God. So here's the thing. And I don't know what he could do because of their, their contract. You're the bleepity bleeping CEO if you think that they're going to undermine your authority, you fucking fire them. Yeah, but you can't always do that with contracts and stuff. There's always an out. Well, well, so, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Except for Kathleen Kennedy, that apparently she's you can't. Fire yeah, you her can or just anything. you can you can totally just do yeah. I've screw I've literally everything up, and then you're still there. She, she's also got an ironclad deal with death. She's been drinking unicorn blood for years. Apparently. She's never gonna die. So yeah. Yeah. I hope nothing bad happens now because I feel bad. Because <laughs> anyway, um, so they said that you know the, when it came to the earnings call, all that was going on, they told um Chapek, hey, you know what, do be sober about it, acknowledge the issues, you know, basically pol- be apologetic. And he didn't do it, which I do remember this because we were like in the kitchen when it went down and we're like, what is going on? And he went on about, you know, she was uh, you know, she was like trying to be frank about saying, you know, macroeconomic circumstances and all that stuff. Wow. And he's going on about, hey, we're doing really good with Oogie Boogie Bash sales. <laughs> and we remember we were talking about it. It was in the kitchen. And you remember that call? Yeah, and we were just like, just what like, the heck? But mommy, I, I colored it thing can yeah, you put no. it on the bridge we were just like what oh is going God. on See, that's his biggest sin it wasn't that he would have been a bad ceo it's that he was a pussy basically you don't have the balls to be the ceo like even excuse Walt- me are you offending pussies I yes am- you are you're offending you're offending people with pussies because they don't have the balls to well, be somebody susan arnold's gonna give me a call and a talking to i'm gonna give you a call and a talking to i'm just saying walt disney you know uncle walt was an act right Yes. Like, you know, it was I do act. know that Walt Disney was a lot of things. He, he was, was always in, smoking. And he he was was in, like, you know, that's what killed him. But I mean, he was an amazing, amazing man. He was not a pussy. He like, if you, if you, talk, you know what, like, I don't know who said it, but you know, I was going to say, you know, pussies take a pounding and balls, you just flick them. And then you're like, Oh my God. And you just collapse it on yourself. So watch what you say. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm I'm metaphor. I'm not talking. When you literal. squeeze a baby out of your balls, then you can say that. Anyway, let's continue. It's 2023. <laughs> Somebody's gonna say you can Wait. squeeze a baby out of your balls. I'm trying I to grab that. There's still more to talk okay, about. Let's and, go. and people are let's like, go. how long is this gonna go? But wait. Okay. There's more. So then, um, then we had after that the, the stock dro- dropped, and then we had you know Nelson Pelt started sniffing around, and then I guess a board member he Katz- can smell pussy from a miles away. <laughs> That's why he was <laughs> so, Dizzy was in heat, and he had to he had to come in to fuck it all up. So uh, <laughs> board member one board member Katz told Chapek he was making a big mistake and releasing, releasing Strange World. Which we what? all know he was, what? Uh, which featured an openly gay character, Katz, who was on former pro- Trump's transition team. Oh, my God. And he's in there with Arnold. Told him the movie was too polarizing and not to Disney's quality standards. He, and, oh, so she. She warned a poor performance wouldn't play well at the board. So Katz is a woman. Katz said, hey, this is a bad idea. Katz was Trump's transition team you know, okay, on transition now, team. Just to be clear. That's not the same kind of transition. It's not the same kind of. Okay, so. Cats here's, declined to comment. So here's the thing. I haven't seen Strange World. Um, I've heard it's meh. That being said, I I personally don't think that was a deal breaker. Nobody knew this movie existed. Like well, they deliver, they sent this movie out to die. But Chapek, what like, could he do? If he didn't release it, and they said the LGBTQ community was going to come down on him because you're hot, trying to hide 
the gay movie. And so he was like in between a rock and a hard place. So he released it and it flopped. Of course it did because it was just not that good. No one even knew what it was. And it cost him about $200 because it flopped so hard. So again, this was a case of indecision. It was like, okay, we're going to release it. We well, he was afraid if they didn't release it, they'd get backlash yeah, again and here would come Arnold. So that's a $200 million mistake. I hope, I hope it was worth it. Um, and you're gone too. And she's gone. You're all gone. So $200 million, you could have, you know, they didn't even promote the movie. So what they did was they, they so again, it was wishy-washy. It's like, well, we don't have the balls to not release it, but we don't have the balls to market it either. So we'll just kind of put it out there and see what happens and not tell anybody it's there. And it's still, and then they still got backlash. Right. Disney didn't promote our LGBTQ yeah. movie. So yeah. they put it out and it failed, which was going up because it wasn't that good of a movie, frankly. Lightyear and failed not because of the, I mean, there were some people that were upset at the gay kiss. Most people didn't even know there was a gay kiss in it. Whatever. They're like, this is a dog shit movie. This is not Toy Story. This is not the Buzz Lightyear we like. This movie sucks. Where's Tim Allen? So, yeah. So, basically, so the actors, even the people that were on Chapek's side are starting to get pissed at him. And now they're all running to Iger, too. And he told them they wanted to make a CEO change. They had to speak to the board in mass. They had to go, all go to the board together and complain, okay? So the boards had discussions with <laughs> Disney. Like to, summoning Beetlejuice. Kind of. Iger, Iger, Iger. The, the board members <laughs> quietly set discussions with Disney division oh, heads. God. And then, um, you know, that, that chick you hired, I can't say her name, McCarthy, Gutierrez, Walden, Bergman, DeMauro. The they all told either Arnold or Mark Parker, their entire board, they no longer supported Chapek as CEO. And then some of these people were Iger's people, okay? So they decided to make a change, and there was only one clear replacement, the idiot who fucked us over and put us here in the first place. So Iger and Bergman near, live near, near um, you know, uh, to, to get near to each other. So Walden and Bergman and Iger all went for walks, and they were begging him to consider coming back. And then next no, thing you golly, know, golly, I don't know. I kind of sort of retired, but if you if you insist, you know, I, I, I just, no. it was such a surprise. It was I, a, I, a surprise. To see this sure, comic, a and then then the next day, they turned around and fired Chapek and didn't even let him send out a goodbye email, which I thought was kind of shit personally. I mean, I don't like Chapek. They're like, you like defending Chapek? No, but I think Chapek got a raw deal, and I think he's been blamed for a lot of shit that Iger did. That being said, Chapek still made a lot of bonehead decisions, and leading up to coming into CEO position, he pissed a lot of people off because he kept cutting things people wanted out of parks and resorts, and he, and to be to be cheap. And so I, I'm not, but I'm saying I think he got a bad deal. They didn't even let him say goodbye, which I think is shitty. They should have at least been a, let him have a statement. You know who else didn't get to say goodbye? Some of these other people that DEI people that were got gone, and other people that got gone. The Disney put a statement out for them. Oh, they 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 chose to leave. Oh, and then around Christmas, um, that shocky whatever girls. quadron the Mean Girls received presents from a colleague. Pink sweaters and homage to their Mean Girl history. Oh my God! So this okay. So what's so freaking wild about this? Uh, Zach, diversity in comics, right? When he talks about Marvel Comics and he talks about the editors at Marvel Comics and the catty attitude, which is owned by Disney, he calls them the Mean Girls. Yeah, because they act like so. It's this usually, is like a Disney thing. What the you know? Hell? Usually, it's a bunch of women who are insecure. You know, so I've actually I've actually heard from female bosses that they won't work with other women. That's not I don't think that's a sexist thing. So I'm just passing that along maybe as because she um, I've actually had them say, well, a lot of times women tend to compete with each other more. They do, but they the also but like, there's a guy and they're afraid of them. They're, they're obviously they, they, they were trying they're competing. They weren't competing with him each other. They were competing. They're uniting to go against him. Yeah, I mean, I'm, well, I'm just saying, like, it just in general, it just seems like, you know, that that is a thing. And now people are going to be like, you're a misogynist. Like, no, I'm telling you what actual female bosses that I've had. Not all of them. If there are if a female boss that's competent and secure, yes. they don't behave that way. Um, in the past few months, Disney has laid off 7,000 people. The company is paying down nearly its $45 billion in debt, much of which comes from the acquisition of Fox, Fox which is under Iger. I was a giant overpay by Iger and his strategy team. In August, Disney shares closed at their lowest point since 2014. Since Iger returned as CEO in November, shares have slumped more than 11%. And they said that um, he's, since he came back, he undone, he undone the reorganization to reorganize it his way. He fired McCarthy at CEFO, it says. Because remember, they said she left. Oh, yeah. he says he, they, that he fired her. Bergman and Walden are back in control of the budget distribution, the decisions for content. They were they were his people. They were the ones kissing his ass and begging him to come back. Oh, my God. And they said um, 
They've had under Bergman's watch. They've had a string of movie failures this year: Little Mermaid, India Jones, Dial Destiny, The Haunted Mansion. Hollywood Reporter called the latter one of the worst stars for, ever among Disney's live-action reimaginings of theme park attractions. They, Personally, was, it wasn't that bad. Haunted Mansion was okay. It's actually pretty good. Yeah, I, like, actually I watched was, it twice. Haunted Mansion is what you would have gotten out of Disney in the '90s or early 2000s. I agree. And I think what happened was that was another one they sent out to die. They're like, let's put a Halloween movie out in July. And not promote it very much, except for Zillow. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. <laughs> was like, what? So they're saying their streaming division has lost $512 million in the quarter end of July. Jeez. The company still aims to break even on stream by the end of 2024, which they've always said. They're not going to. It hasn't readjusted its target, which was reset in August 22, of having $215 million to $245 million by the end of the year. $135 million, $165 million, including, excluding India. One person who helps at those targets said lightning would have to strike five times for Disney to reach them. At the end of the most recent quarter, Disney had 146.1 million subscribers, 105.7 <sighs> excluding India, and et cetera, et cetera. But they're basically like, since Iger came back, it's gotten worse. But it sounds like, you know, here's the thing. If Iger, if Iger had just let Chapek, done his job and let Chapek do his job and they actually worked together, we probably could have avoided a whole bunch of this shit. And Disney would not be in the hellhole it is now. <laughs> Iger led Disney raising Disney Plus pricing to push toward profitability. The Chapek era sub goals appear unattainable, blah, 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 because they're, they're now their pricing is so high. People aren't going to subscribe. My it's God. just, you know, it goes on and on. But, you know, the, 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 Iger agrees he bears responsibility to the people who know him. Yeah, you're damn right you do. Yeah, for more reasons than just what you did before you left. It sounds like when you were supposed to be not CEO, you were doing shit the whole time too. Okay, so there are so many people coming and going from Disney, and this company is such a clusterfuck. Shareholders need to revolt and say, just gut this company, because what else we got to lose? I mean, what else do you have to lose at this point? There's nobody driving the bus. They're driving it off a freaking cliff. You're better off putting new people in or something and just be like, just get rid of everybody and start over again, because that's the only thing that's going to save this company. It's just, it's just, it just goes on and on about the stuff that they're going to have to make. They're going to have to do about divesting the legacy cable networks, about possibly selling the company. And they're going to have to, you know, divest some things to make it more attractive. And they said, you know, he got a contract extension again, which, you know, because of the people on the board he appointed. Um, and it means they said he's going to be CEO for years to come. And now the internal candidates will do their best Disney nice to win over Iger and the board. And yet it's entirely possible to spend the bulk of their careers working and put polit politicking and pining for a job they'll never, ever get. And Disney might be gone. But it's a ride of a lifetime. Yeah, this is the big drop at the end, mm -hmm. right? This is the big drop. Yeah, yeah. sorry this was a long video, but I told you there was a lot of stuff in no. this that was like, holy shit, this makes sense. Oh, I already know what I'm going to call this. This is, this is how... You were trying to figure out the call before we started. I said, just wait till we go through the video. I'm sure it'll come to you. This is how Disney chose death, basically. This is how the company decided to kill itself. Well, from Iger? Because yeah. it mostly sounds like it, this all came from Iger. But this explains everything. This explains how this company has made all these idiotic decisions because nobody's fucking driving this train. And given how CNBC usually is kissing Disney's ass and you're always kissing Iger's ass and they were really nice to chat back too and stuff. You know, it's, it's, this, this article surprised me that it came from them. But what you're saying about do they have ties to people in the strike makes a lot of sense too because oh, they yeah. usually don't like go at, they usually don't do something like this, you know, to lay it all out there, which is, I'm glad they did. Somebody needed to. Somebody needed to, but I think it was somebody that had an axe to grind with with Iger. So it's either Chapek, people that got fired, like Kareem Daniel, whatever. Um, Susan Arnold could be whoever's got an axe to grind. So all of all of Iger's enemies came out of the woodwork, and I think a lot of it that you know probably kicked this off was the strikes because everybody hates them now. Well, that's what this last last well next to last sentence makes. I think. Leans into what you're saying. Just as it has since 2005, the magical world of Disney once again revolves around Iger and everyone else is on his ride. <laughs> Everybody else is riding the Iger train. This is... I told you. And I'm sorry this is very long, guys, but I did tell you it was going to be I, very long because there's a lot of information it's here. It's all clicking. Basically, you have this company. It's supposed to be the large, like one of the largest entertainment companies on the planet being run like a shitty mom and pop business. 
like I, it just seems like there's so much you know drama it's not about the company ever this is why this might even lead into more of those lawsuits because they're like naming these people saying you were, were too busy you know shifting stuff around and not doing what you're supposed to do and misleading investors and there's going to be more lawsuits because of it like you guys are supposed to in fighting and trying to tank each other that you tank the company and now we're out money again if true again this is all from cnbc so i can't if, you know if true i don't personally know the validity if this is true then investors and this is coming right before their their end of year results mm -hmm. investors need to riot and be like we demand that you gut the c-suite and start over because nobody knows how to run this fucking company or they're just gonna you know, break it up, sell it off, and be done with it. And that could be too. That and that could explain his his change in tone. Could be like, well, these these people aren't with me anymore, so fuck them. I'm gonna sell Disney. Well, no, a lot of them are still with him. Like a lot of people, he came back and gave them control again. They they wanted him back because they didn't have control. He comes back and now they get control again. This company has been. And this is like Game of Thrones. Infested with termites. God, can you imagine? Can you imagine what Walt or Roy would think of this? Can you imagine? This is not Disney. <laughs> this those, is not those commies. Disney. No, sorry. He would. <laughs> I, know. I mean, we joked about it before, but just <gasps> all the the shit going on, like this shit did not happen on their watch. Even like Herb Walker, even Michael Eisner to some degree, this level of bullshittery did not happen at the Disney company. This but is But here we are. This is a clown show, the first freaking And we would know. We would know. Honk, honk, <laughs> motherfuckers. Oh my God. Can we please wrap this up? We're wrapping I, don't, this I, mean, up. I don't know how long it's been going, but it's at least 45 minutes, probably longer. That's yeah, probably like two hours. I don't know. I told you. When he was it's like, why is it? It took me like two or three hours just to break this down to an article on our site. Oh my God. Because it just, it was so much. Yeah. All let's, right. Let's wrap it up, guys. Yes. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your patience. And there is no hope for this company unless they get rid of everybody at this point. I mean, that's so. it. It's over. You know? Talk to you later. See ya. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.